So I welcome you all on the sustainability forum discussion, uh, especially focusing on the uh, local market. And uh, it is my honor to be moderating this session. In this session, uh, we will discuss about corporate sustainability from a very distinguished panel of presenters and discussions. So I'd like to introduce first Mr. Sharif Zahid, who is the managing director of Onunto Group. And Mr. Sharif Zahid is recognized as uh, one of the commercially important person, not just a CIP, but the youngest CIP for uh, five consecutive years. Uh, and under his dynamic leadership, Onunto Group has engaged in other business sectors. He is the chairman of Zero Gravity Limited, who is running the B2B e-commerce platform, Sindabad.com. Onunto Group is engaged in different types of businesses, in RMG, in uh, real estate now, and also in e-commerce. So I'd like to know from Mr. Uh, Sharif Zahid about their corporate sustainability strategy and what they are doing in ensuring sustainability. That's right. Yeah, I was just asked by this gentleman if I went to ISD. So that I'll take that as a big compliment because at my time ISD was not there actually. So uh, I've actually spent uh, almost 25 years uh, you know, of, uh, running this business. So when I started off in the garment business, it was a family business, started in 91. And I got back in uh, 99, actually. I'm a, a Longhorn graduate from UT Austin. Uh, so the first part of, I think, the business sustainability is uh, garments has been pretty traditional in, in Bangladesh, right? And when you think of garments, the, the entrepreneurs that have been involved since the beginning, it's a pretty strenuous, pretty entrepreneurial driven business. And I think the business sustainability part of it is probably like you know, uh, one of the more important aspect of it. So when we took over the business, uh, I was probably about 23, 24 at that time, back in 99. And the, the main challenge was like, you know, how to run this business and, uh, and grow this business uh, to like an international standard. So I think when we started off, we had 1,500 people in one factory. Our factory was in Elephant Road at that time. We were primarily a bottoms factory. Now what happens in Bangladesh is, what we have seen is, out of the $40 billion export, the entire focus is 20 billion is coming from woven. And if you look at woven, it's primarily woven bottoms. And then the rest of the 20% is today coming from the knits, which is again primarily probably 90%, 95% uh, cotton knits. So the diversification in this industry has not really happened uh, in that manner. So when, when I took over the company uh, with that single factory, uh, our first primary focus was on building the organization. And I think what we did rightfully, now that uh, I go back 25 years, is we actually spent on the people. And uh, I made sure that we, rec we did not recruit, uh, first of all, from our village town, which is very common practice in Bangladesh because you get a flux of you know, requests coming from recruiting people from your family or your, or your village or like, you know. So I think we changed that. We brought in professionals. We had to rely a lot on expats because uh, when we look at experiences of 20 years plus in a certain product category, it's very difficult to find professional people. Uh, either our people don't have the patience or we are too entrepreneurial and we end up starting businesses. So it's very difficult to find the right professional people. So our goal was to kind of uh, equip the company with the right people, and that was kind of our main focus. As we set up our first factory, we started expanding into new territories. So the, just the idea of the owner not being present in a factory and running that factory remotely was a big challenge at that time, basically. So our first factory, my first factory that I expanded beyond where I was sitting was in Ghazipur, actually, which was quite far. And we expanded, uh, started expanding again in the bottoms category, which was our core strength. Uh, and because we are in the fast fashion business, uh, the scale really matters here because it's an everyday low price. Uh, 
our owners and our entrepreneurs complain a lot about the pricing in this industry, but we have to understand that we're in the fast fashion business. And fast fashion retailers are basically everyday low prices. Be it Primark, be it Marks and Spencer, be it Gap, it's always about competing in the low price segment, basically. And that has given opportunity in Bangladesh. Of course, that has made companies like us grow uh, manifold. That has made the country itself, uh, the Bangladesh, uh, was able to grow so many factories because, again, like you know, these are fast fashion business. When I started, H&M was doing seven billion dollar business. Today, it's a twenty billion dollar business. Gap was again, like you know, at uh, uh, what eleven, twelve billion dollar. They didn't do that well. They're still stuck at eighteen billion. But we have kind of grown with these retailers. So we had to focus on building factories which are equipped with the best machineries where we could really push on the productivity. Uh, there's a lot of automation that happens in our factories. And uh, every day we are focusing on how to improve the efficiency to keep up with the challenging uh, requirement of the industry. So we have built world-class factories like this, the one you see here. This, we call it super base factories, basically. So each of these factories will have 5,000 people or plus, run by CEOs, run by independent management. And this factory, for example, is a denim factory, which is equipped with everything from, uh, from stitching to washing, state-of-the-art washing, to embroidery prints and everything that you, know, you need in a denim factory. I will cover the, the sustainability part, because I think this session is about that. Uh, but just moving beyond that, I think as, as the business sustainability, what we have done as a company is we have truly diversified the product base. So we have created dedicated world-class factories which from denim we actually went into suits manufacturing. Uh, again, this was a very, very specialized uh, uh, project itself. Uh, we made a partnership with a, a British partner, again, who had like 40 years experience in the industry. So this factory has been almost 15 years now, and this is the biggest uh, suit manufacturer in the region, actually. Not only in Bangladesh, but in the region. Then again, then we went into sweater manufacturing. Now this sweater factory is equipped with uh, jacket machines, and our sweater FOBs are almost at the $7 range, which is very uh, premium for the market. We have recently got into outerwear, and uh, our last project was in Chittagong. which was into uh, lingerie, basically. Uh, again, lingerie is a very specialized project. If you look at the total export of lingerie out of Bangladesh, it's probably less than $2 billion. If you look at the export of lingerie from uh, China, <clears throat> we're looking at a almost $40, $44 billion plus industry, which again, like, you know, sets in a big, big opportunity for Bangladesh. So I think this is the business sustainability where we have to continuously look at new products that are, that has a uh, competitive advantage making out of Bangladesh, products that will be moving out of China, and we need to continu continuously invest in this kind of factories. Uh, we are looking into activewear uh, factory, uh, activewear fabric manufacturing actually, which will be the first polyester nylon based fabric. So I think moving from, you know, product to product is very important for us to reach that you know, 50 billion, 100 billion dollar goal uh, in the garment sector. So these are our seven factories. We employ 30,000 people. And each of these factories, I must say today, is, is are just world-class factories and comparable to anywhere in the world, actually. So these are some pictures of the factories. A uh, lot of automations, a lot of, uh, in the denim laundries, we use uh, machines that are uh, using liquor ratio of one, uh, one is to three or less. We use a lot of lasers. Uh, we use ozone. So I think uh, the sustainability part in garments starts from the machineries because you have to start with like efficient machines that are environmental friendly, that uses uh, least amount of energy. So going deeper into our sustainability in, uh, initiatives, a uh, lot of the things in garment industry is basically, it's, it's been there in the in industry for a long time. So you will find a lot of certification bodies which are actually already like, you know, putting a uh, measurement of like, you know, what we, are, uh, what we need to achieve. So in terms of the compliance, uh, you probably have heard of Accord. Uh, I was involved with 
uh, BGME actually, I was in the board and I was one of the first ones to start RSC, which was a conversion of Accord uh, having local industry participation. So the Accord and Alliance has actually set standards uh, in the compliance uh, requirements of the country. I think overall the country has spent over $3 billion since Rana, Rana Plaza tragedy to improve the compliance standards uh, of our factories in Bangladesh, uh, which we actually probably are not marketing properly. But I must say that the factories in Bangladesh today are probably one of the best uh, you know, in terms of compliance standards across the world. Then you have SEDEX, you have uh, LEED certification. So there are all these certification uh, you know, that you can target and try to achieve. Now, HIG, there's a thing called Higgs Index. I don't know if you, if you guys know about this, but Higgs Index is again a measurement that a lot of the brands and the manufacturers are using today. So Higgs clearly gives a guideline on what you are supposed to do in terms of environmental responsibility and also the social responsibility. So our goal is to score high in the HIG index. So, you know, our factories are trying to achieve like, you know, 80 plus scores. Uh, energy management is another key responsibility. Uh, along with that, water management comes into a big, big role because, you know, a lot of our laundries and denim washing are, are again, continuously we're trying to save water use. Wastewater management, recycle, uh, chemical management, again, in the laundries. Uh, these are all the areas where we are trying to be uh, improving ourselves in terms of social, uh, environmental and social responsibility. So I've mentioned about Higgs Index, so again this gives a good measurement of what we are doing. Energy management, you know, this is not only for, the, for, for our brands, for our buyers, but this is also for us to be more efficient. So using servo motors, using uh, uh, LED lights, uh, these are always continuously like in a process of investments that are going on. Uh, if we want to look at the, the global goals of most of the brands, if you look at Inditex, for example, or H&M, uh, a big goal that you know, we are trying to align with is the carbon footprint, basically. So Inditex has already uh, declared that they want to achieve net zero by 2040. H&M has set, set, uh, set an even more ambitious target to reach that goal by 2030. Now, how do you achieve net zero? Uh, being a manufacturer. So there has to be a certain plan. We cannot do that today at one go, but there has to be a certain plan. So each of our factories are, are actually targeting to reduce uh, carbon emission uh, by a certain percentage, and we're trying to kind of connect with the customers to do that. Why are we doing this? It's not like H&M can put the logo of Ananta and say that, okay, Ananta is doing this better, so you buy these garments. It doesn't happen actually. So we always complain that, okay, we have so many lead certified factories in Bangladesh, but are the buyers paying us more? No, they're not. This is just part of the requirement actually. Either you do it or you fall out of the race. What H&M or Zara or these buyers are trying to do is they're trying to set up the story that we are responsible companies and we source from responsible companies. So if we as manufacturers out of Bangladesh, if we don't align that goal, we will be falling out of their priority list. So just to stay in the race, we are having to invest all these and stay with the game basically. So again, use of uh, waters, how many liters of waters will be used for uh, washing a pair of jeans. We are reducing that in, in many ways. We are putting recycled ETPs. Eventual goal is to do 100% recycling, but again, that's a very expensive proposition. So right now we are uh, at 30% to 40% recycle in, in our plants. Uh, I talked about the machines. So we use these uh, modern machines called E-Flow, ozone into the washing. Uh, a lot of lasers are being used. Even our fabric suppliers, fabric manufacturers are trying to align with that and set like, you know, uh, dyeing ratios that are actually using less water. There's a lot of projects that we are doing. Uh, uh, this uh, ZDHC is one. So these are all the best practices. I think uh, I'll need to speed up on this. Uh, we are doing projects with IFC on, on PACT. They've already launched PACT 2 now. Uh, there's STYW project. So these are all projects that we work with the DFIs or the brands 
rainwater harvesting, tree plantation. Like I said, if you want to achieve net zero, then you cannot just do it from your own factory, actually. You have to think of going beyond. Probably we as a company, we have to set up solar power, uh, you know, uh, factories or townships or something else, somewhere else, which can a actually give the points to the factories, manufacturing units. So I think over the years, uh, 30 years of the company, we've been engaged in all these different initiatives. These are pretty much the, uh, the industry practices. So doing these properly actually help us in, in being uh, competitive and you know, moving forward. So again, like I think the RNG industry is very, very important. It's not only for the RNG sector. We know like, you know, the banking, insurance, uh, freight forwarding, all the sectors pretty much are involved with this. Now today, like, you know, the entire challenge on the foreign reserve is kind of dependent on the two sectors, right? The garments and the remittances. And I, as a, as a entrepreneur, where we face everyday challenges, in spite of that, I, I would say that the RNG industry still has a lot of, lot of potential. Today's China is trying to move out of garments. They, are, they have a $200 billion plus industry. So even a 5% shift of that means like, you know, they, we're gonna be gaining a $10 billion industry. Now this share is probably gonna come to Bangladesh because, you know, we don't see Myanmar we don't see the African countries prepared to kind of grab this opportunity. So as we diversify the export basket, I think we must also try to achieve the opportunities within the RNG sector, investing into new products, investing into sustainability, investing into product design, and also investing in the forward integration. That is another thing that uh, you know, I'm not touching base today, but there's so much to do on branding, licensing, setting up offices, design houses, uh, close to where our customers are. So that's, that's kind of my, uh, you know, uh, experience with the RMG sector. I'm going to move on to a real estate sector because that's my passion at the moment and I'm spending a lot of time. Uh, again, we have engaged, the Group has engaged in a real estate project, um, which is quite different again. I think when we, when I got into the RMG sector, we did bring a lot of change actually in terms of organization, in terms of investing in new products. I think we are trying to do the same thing with uh, real estate. I'll just play a quick video so that you understand like, you know, the kind of pro uh, project that we are launching in, in Dhaka or we have launched already. Imagine a life of unparalleled well-being, a luxurious green oasis for the entire family, a peaceful sanctuary, a shelter from the city. Ananta Terraces, the first eco-luxury branded residence in the heart of Dhaka. Five-star luxury resort style living. Elegant prayer halls, heated swimming pools, steam rooms, and saunas, 24-hour concierge, fully equipped gyms, indoors and out, branded services that include personal trainers and yoga instructors, a 250-guest function hall, as grand as a five-star hotel ballroom, a children's play area, fresh air, a beautiful central water feature, lush forest vegetation that takes care of your well-being, Stay active on one of the in-house squash courts, multi-purpose sports courts, jogging track, or tennis court. Feel the positive effects of unparalleled sustainable features and elevate the quality of your life and of those you care most about. Experience the soothing sensation of an intelligent lighting plan that adapts to reflect the time of day. Choose your unique terrace apartment from three to five bedrooms, large, beautiful, Simple and duplex apartments that feel like independent homes. Spacious, all sides open layouts, modern and modern classic interiors with the freedom to select the most appropriate layout for your family. Expansive bedrooms, European marble floors. Look to the future in a home that puts the well being of your family first. Live a life in connection with nature, a life of beauty inside and out. 
Indulge in small pleasures at the exclusive Ananta Mall. Dine romantically. Watch a movie. Browse for something special. Feel safe, secure, and inspired by Dhaka's greenest and most exclusive gated community. Be the proud owner of a unique home that will only grow in value over time. Live a life of unparalleled well-being. Live beautifully. Live Ananta. Great, thank you so much. So, we are extremely, extremely uh, proud of this project. I think we came into the market and uh, this is going to be a big game changer for in real estate sector in Bangladesh. Uh, why so? Again, from the business point of view, Bangladesh is a high key, Jay Jeta Kore, we Akijinish repeat Kurta Takeshawai. We garment sector, Q actor, Ahanami suit Kurse, and Shawai suit Kurbe, Akijinish repetition hierarchy. On the real estate sector, Jeta Hotseja, Amra Dekseja, Abner Akbiga, Bat Katarupur, same kind of year, you go sign up with the landowner, you give 50%, even 60%, and then you do the same kind of project. You are, we are not bringing any difference. Even if you go to Calcutta, actually, just our next door, you go to Newtown, you will see amazing projects. LNT, uh, I, I went to a project called Arbana, amazing project, atmosphere uh, done by Forum, brilliant project. These are like world class projects. Amra Bangalore, Amra Jay, Kintu Tiki, Canada, Dubai, 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 I mean, they claim 65,000 taka square feet there, Amra Bangalore apartment Kintu Sukana. And it is, I would say the standards is absolutely not even comparable actually to what we are doing here. We in Bangladesh, I think we are pushing the real estate sector to envision large projects. Uh, we are pushing the standards to a level which a lot of our real estate players are already aware of. And I think now uh, people will start thinking about this. What we have done is we've gone, we've taken the right uh, way of handling this, uh, the way you design a hotel project, for example, uh, for building a hotel, you have at least 10 different consultants, starting from architects, landscape, uh, interior, lighting, kitchen. So we've taken the same discipline and we've put it in real estate. And how we could do that is because this is a 15 acre land, it's 45 biga of land. So when you do the economies of scale, you actually can afford to put in the best consultants and really provide a very upscale product to the customers at a very reasonable price. Uh, so if I come to the sustainability part of it quickly, I'll, I'll try to finish it now. Uh, we are starting with uh, this project has been registered for the first LEED certified platinum uh, uh, project. So this will be a, a platinum LEED certified homes. So there are no projects as such in Bangladesh design. So when we register with leads, obviously, like, you know, we have to maintain certain discipline. Uh, we, have, we are maintaining a 65% space, which is green. Only the built up space is only 35%. We are building jogging tracks here. We're putting in a lot of wellness factors into this. And having the, the garments background, uh, we've built a lot of factories. So a lot of the things, for example, ETP, rainwater harvesting, uh, water recycle, uh, WTP. How many of you have homes that treat Are we aware like what is coming out of the wasa water, the hardness level? What is like why we are losing our hair actually? We are, we are spending uh, 25,000 taka um, into like, you know, this buying these apartments, but are we actually spending anything on, on building the infrastructure? So we are really looking at those things. We are looking at the indoor air quality. Uh, we are trying to bring down the AQL level to less than 50 uh, by putting VRF air conditioning. We have double glazing. We are putting in a filtration system. So we are looking at a lot of these components, I think, which is already like, you know, the top developers are already trying to compare their projects with ours. So if not anything, I think this will be a big push uh, to the real estate sector. Even while we are designing uh, the, the architectural design, we did the, the sunlight survey, actually how you can place the towers to make sure that you, know, you get adequate sun during the time that you need and the shade during the time that you, know, you need to be away from sun. So all these studies have been made. Uh, we are putting EV chargers. 
uh, we're putting solar panels, water recycling, I've mentioned all these. So please come and visit us and you know, we'll be happy to share all this uh, you know, information with you. We're also building a retail in front. Uh, do you actually see this kind of retail in Dhaka? I, I haven't seen anything like this. So this is 250,000 square feet retail, which is three story plus two basements. Uh, this will actually give you that opportunity to be in Dhaka and enjoying this sort of luxury. So again, I think like, you know, this is going to be a game changer and we, someone has to like, you know, come up with these projects. I think we have done that. Other companies will follow suit and we really want to set the example that as Bangladesh, you know, develops by this 7% you know, growth, we also need to have accommodations and places to stay, which kind of supports, you know, this sort of development. So, Thank you all. I think this was part of my presentation. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Sharif Jahi. So we, we have heard fascinating story about uh, the journey of Anuntu Group in the RMG business and as well the new venture in the real estate sector. I, I think uh, we, we have heard a lot of innovative things that you have made uh, or trying to uh, achieve. But on the sustainability front, there are some very uh, crucial things that came out. One is investing in people that Mr. Manush also mentioned. Investing in technology. That is very important. Then diversification. In, uh, within RMG you try to diversify and now outside RMG you are uh, trying to diversify. And then very important is complying with the uh, standards. Compliance standards that are there. Uh, caring about the environment in general in terms of energy usage, water usage, wastewater management, chemical management, uh, etc. And uh, finally, uh, pushing the standards. You know, uh, to be sustainable, you need to be uh, top of your game. And uh, doing the same thing cannot really ensure uh, sustainability. So, uh, so thank you very much for giving insights and examples. And I'm sure uh, all the people here uh, learned a lot and uh, for the sake of time I'm not going to the audience at this moment. Uh, we have other, other sessions uh, but thank you very much uh, to all uh, of you who are present here for listening to all these fascinating stories. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks to all of our panelists. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, that was the second open forum discussion on sustainability forum local version. I'd like to request our panelists to stay back as we are about to hand over a small token of appreciation. To hand over the certificates, I would like to request Mr. Adil Chaudhuri, Managing Director, Bank Asia, to come up on stage and hand over the certificates to our honorable panelists, please. <laughs>